if there was ever a people that felt that they had, you know, God's exclusive mandate, that they had God's exclusive love, no matter what they did, right? Um, it is the Zionist Jewish rabbis and the Zionist Jewish human, uh, uh, you know, the Zionist is the Zionist Jewish way of thinking really is very racist. I mean, it thinks that, you know, the Jewish people have some special privilege that is completely different from any other human being. So they have this discussion about how a Jewish soul is different from a human soul. And so let me just get straight into it. So let's see from the horse's mouth, from a rabbi himself, how he sees a Jewish soul different from a human soul, even though the Zionists have tried very hard to hide some of their Kabbalah books, their Zohar, their other books in which, uh, in, in fact, there's no proper translation of Zohar even till today. That's like, you know, so the thing is, is that Muslims are straight up, right? This is what our Quran says. This is what our Prophet says. But the, um, the Zionists have a need to hide a lot of things. Uh, be, and, and that shows uh, the, the internal state of these people too um but let's get straight to it let's 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 see from a jewish perspective what is the difference between a human soul and a jewish soul means that it is worth whatever pain the soul has to experience to reconnect with earth in order to answer your child's question the soul is very real Let's describe the soul for a moment. What is a soul? What is a neshama? When God created the world, he created things that never existed. Let there be light, and there was light. It had never existed before. Let there be a firmament, a heaven, had never existed before. The sun, the moon, the stars, the water, they were all new, never existed. A soul, a Jewish soul, is a little piece of God that always existed, just as God always existed. This little piece of God... Is so you see here... A Jewish soul is a little piece of God. And now he's going to compare this to a human soul. Is, of course, alive like God is alive. God is a living being. A little piece of him is a little piece of life. What does this soul bring with it? We know that God is kind. Chesed. The soul is capable of chesed. We know that God is all-knowing. The soul is capable of intelligence. We know that God can be strict and severe. The soul has a capacity for justice, judgment, even anger and hate. In other words, the soul has the ten faculties with which God functions as a creator. So the soul has intelligence and emotions. That's a soul. A soul can love and it can hate. It can understand and it can reason. It can be stubborn, it can be determined, it can communicate. These are the ten functions of the soul. A human soul is similar except that it's created. It's mortal. Here he hides some information, which I'm not going to go into today. But he says a human soul is similar except that it is created. Meaning the Jewish soul is not created. It is from, from God himself. Right? Um, that's kind of weird. We have... And by the way, where do they get these teachings from? Is it from Torah? No. 
these are interpretations that they put into their Talmud and more more importantly into Kabbalah and more importantly than that into Zahar. And so in, even though the book of Allah should be the most important and then the other books that are explanations but they have it the op opposite way. They consider the Zuhar the most important, then the Kabbalah, then the Talmud, then the Torah. Two souls. A godly soul with ten godly functions and a human soul with ten... So I'm just going to leave it till here for now. Uh, another thing that I just wanted to share with you. So this person you know, says a Jewish soul in a non-Jewish body, right? This is the question a Jewish soul in a non-Jewish body and this is to make the point that some of the rabbis and especially the Zionist rabbis they all consider Jewish souls to be superior than any other soul and what is the result of that result of that is you look down on people and you then justify doing anything wrong to them this is what happens when you go to war right when you go to war what is it that is very necessary to go to war? You have to be, we're on the right side. We're on the good side. We're on the side of democracy and liberty and justice for all and so on and so forth so that you feel good. And then these are the bad guys and these are barbarians and these, you know, these bearded people, they don't know how to live. Let's kill them, right? It makes it easier to, to do that. So when you have a religion like Hinduism that has a caste system, well, Judaism isn't, uh, especially the Zionist form of it isn't very different from that okay and so let's see now here <clears throat> uh, when a non-jew feels a pull towards the Jewish faith and a desire to bring Jewish uh, to belong to Jewish people it may be a latent Jewish soul wanting to return to its community of origin now in Islam obviously all the Muslims know this all human beings have you know, there's no different soul. We're essentially the same. It's a matter of if you accepted the truth after seeing it or you were stubborn, uh, too stubborn to accept the truth or when you saw the truth, you were able to accept it. But the essential, basic, the fitra of every human, the nature of every human being is the same in Islam, right? Now, um, let me then show you this and I'll just end here after I show you this, inshallah. Uh, let's actually do it from here. So, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم سورة المائدة آية نمبر 18 وقالت اليهود والنصارى and the Jews and the Christians they say particularly when Allah says Jews and Christians this is specifically referring to the Judeo-Christian civilization that was to exist in today's time. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَىٰ نَحْنُ أَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ We are the children of God. We are so special. We, we can do anything to anyone. We can look down on anyone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَىٰ نَحْنُ أَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ Jews say, we are the sons of God. We are the children of God. And the Christians say, they are the children of God. If you are so special, Allah says, oh, really? Then why have we been punishing you? Meaning in the past. And why is it that you don't win any wars when you go into them? We have been punishing you for your sins. You are like any other human being that we have created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ He forgives whoever he wants. And he... Uh, he punishes whoever he wants. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَإِلَيْهِ الْمَصِيرِ And for Allah is whatever is in the heavens and the earth and whatever is between the two. And to him is the final return. So this is an important point to understand why there is this mentality to look down upon others and uh, to look down upon and, and that it's it's sanctioned by the religion. And I just want to end over here today. Please leave your comments, uh, like the video, share the video. I want to show the Muslims that what is the mentality of, I hear so many Muslims saying, oh, you know, these Jewish people, I know they're great. Yeah, there are a lot of great Jewish. I know a lot of great Jews. I have a lot of great Jewish friends. But, you know, for someone that's a Zionist Jew, 
uh, who looks down on the Palestinians and the way they treat the Palestinians, the reason, the seeds of that are the ideas that emerge, the basic ideas. Oh, these are these are just these are like animal human beings, and we are like special human beings, and that justifies the type of action that they take against the Muslims and the Palestinians and the others. And so I just wanted this to be very clear. Okay, all right, sound like. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas.